couple of people have asked me about what intercom system I use, if any. So, here it is. Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Senna 3S Plus. Stay tuned. I bought this just very recently, which is why I still have the box. Now, what I really like about it is its simplicity and how it's quite streamlined. You've got a plus and a minus button, which are easy enough to control with gloves. You've got two speakers, obviously, and two different types of boom mic that you can use for phone calls or if you want to connect to other riders. And at the back here, we also have the little jack. There's another 3S Plus that's got a boom mic without the controller, and the controls are on the stem itself. Of course, this is not the first intercom or sound system that I've ever owned, but I very recently had one where the battery stopped working on it, and it was a Chinese model. I don't remember exactly what the name of this thing was. Shitecom. Disclaimer. May explode or electrocute the rider when it rains. So I figured this time round I would buy myself a brand name, either a Sena or a Cardo. But at the same time I didn't want to spend a fortune on this, and that's because the majority of these systems have got a whole bunch of features which, if I'm being honest, I don't really use. If you're the type of rider who is very sociable, and you like to ride in large groups, and perhaps you're touring, or maybe you're riding with other people, and you want to stay in constant contact with each other... What's that, James? You took a left at the Fox and Hounds. I told you to take a right, mate. Foxtrot Oscar, over. Then I would have to say that this Senna 3S system is not for you. Goodbye. You can only connect to one other rider at a time, and the range is only 400 metres. On the other hand, if you're a little bit more like me... Mama! Ooh, then this system is probably perfect for you. I guess what I'm really saying is, I don't ride to have conversations with other people. Unless it's you guys, of course. Now, it might sound a little bit cliche, but for me, that's what riding a motorcycle is all about. I don't really want to be thinking about other people and where they are and what they're doing. I'm more interested in the open road, looking at the scenery, being alone with my own thoughts, and maybe sometimes just having a little bit of music on the go. When we look at this Senna 3S intercom system, one of the first things you notice, and certainly one of the things I like most about it, is just how small it is, especially on the side of the helmet. The benefit for me is just how simple it is to use and how intuitive it is. A lot of other systems on the market may well be larger, but they've also got small buttons or you know weird toggles and stuff like that, and I find them quite difficult to use. When you plug this in, the little LED will start off initially as being red, and then once it's fully charged, that light will turn blue. That first charge probably takes about, I would say, three and a half hours. After that, two hours 45 to three hours, will charge it, and that'll give you a run time for about eight hours. I made use of the fact that this helmet is already set up for a Nolan Endcom system, so I was able to put this basically in its place without cutting anything out. I also downloaded the Sena app onto my phone and then I updated the software. You want to just hold the plus and the minus button together. The system will power on and it will tell you the status of the battery. Hello. Battery level is high. It will either be battery high, battery medium or battery low. And then it will automatically connect to whichever device is in range that you've paired with the device. Of course, the most obvious use for the plus and the minus buttons is for volume. You know, if you're listening to music, for example, press the plus, turn the music up, the minus, and turn the music back down again. So for me personally, I feel that the quality of the music coming through these speakers is very good, but it's certainly good enough. Of course, at 70 miles an hour, it can be a little bit more difficult to listen to music, especially with the wind noise and things like that. But guys, I never ride without some kind of ear protection either, and I use these MotoSafe earplugs. And the Alpine MotoSafe earplugs are really good because they block out a lot of that wind noise, that rumble that you don't really want, but they still allow you to have conversations or listen to music, for example. Everything that you need for the install is in the box, so you'll have a selection of the two separate mics there. You've got the boom mic and the little button mic. You have little Velcro pads and you've got 3M sticky tape as well. 
Well, for most helmets, the installation of this is going to be really simple. With this Nolan here, there's plenty of room to run the wiring. And it's also got speakers, or cutouts for speakers already in the helmet, which actually fit exactly there, so I didn't need to modify anything. Because it doesn't have a whole bunch of buttons on there, it's really simple to scroll through the menu to find the settings you need, or to get the device to do what you need it to do. Phone pairing. Configuration menu. Second mobile phone pairing. GPS pairing. Delete all pairings. Universal intercom pairing. Factory reset. Exit. Overall, the installation of this took probably less than 10 minutes for me and I decided to use a little button mic rather than a boom mic you know, for the, the very odd occasion that I might find myself paired up with another rider or maybe uh, using the voice commands for Satnav, for example. Direct me to Sterling. Alright, Sterling. Or, you know, taking a phone call. The microphones have got noise cancelling built into them as well, which is not unusual for these systems. But that just means that it's easier for people to hear you clearly, even if you're on the move. So I guess you could say, so far, so good. But there is a negative for me, and it's only a tiny thing. And that is that you can't use it and charge it at the same time. In other words, I can't plug that in whilst I'm riding the bike and charge it and still listen to music at the same time. Play music. Playing on YouTube music. But having said that, you're going to get a good eight hours out of this before you need to recharge it. If you need a system where you're predominantly listening to music, maybe you take the odd phone call, or you use it for voice commands for, you know, sat nav and phones. Call voicemail. Calling voicemail. But you want a quality brand name that's not going to burst the bank, then I think this is probably the right system for you. Especially if you're not the type of rider who needs to speak to, you know, tons of different riders whilst you're out on the road. Hang on a minute, Jimmy. Goodbye.